So Glenn, now we've talked, this 70 meter dish is now looking at Voyager 2, uh, and we're only focusing on things, you said 100,000 kilometers roughly and further. So the moon is there, the moon's 384,000 and uh, Mars and all those sorts of things. So we're not looking at anything in low earth orbit, essentially, right? No, so we don't need to actually do that unless it's a mission that's say just launched and okay. heading out you know, the moon ah, and beyond, okay. then we're tracking on its outward journey. But all those satellites in Earth orbit, you really only need small ground assets to do that, not a big 70 metre dish or 34 metre dish, a little tiny dish on the roof of your house, or even your mobile phone yep. communicates with satellites in Earth orbit. So that stuff is just too close for us to actually, literally too close for us to worry about. And so even though we, you're the, you know, the deep space network, you're the place for the powerful receivers, it's actually too powerful and impractical for most satellites around the Earth. Yeah, so not only for the transmitting power that we have, but yeah. also the receiving power. We're literally getting those whispers yep. from space. Satellites in Earth orbit, they're really shouting. <laughs> and that can overwhelm the receivers. And in fact, even when we've got a mission launching, I'll give you a good example. The James Webb Space Telescope, yep. when it launched, actually had to turn down its onboard transmitter <laughs> so they didn't overwhelm the receivers here on Earth. So it's kind of like in a, in a, if you're in a very dark room and you turn on a very bright light and all of a sudden you're yeah, shocked. It's, just totally it's the same thing with radio waves. Yeah, it is. When I mean, it's literally just another form of light. That's right. Now, so this means, though, you're focusing on these planetary missions and solar system missions and slightly beyond with Voyager, you're not doing anything else with other satellites. So just because there's a satellite up there doesn't necessarily mean you're talking to it, right? No, and that's correct. We really just handle the deep space stuff. Uh, there are lots of other dishes handling the much closer missions. So our work is purely civilian scientific work. We don't handle any secretive stuff. All of the wonderful thing about space exploration is all the data we receive not only we're we sending it off to the scientists, we're also putting it live on the internet. So you get to see the latest pictures from Mars or from wherever out there at the same time as we see it. Sometimes you see it before we <laughs> see it because scientists are not awake 24 hours a day. That's right. I work at a nighttime observatory with optical telescopes and we hate light because yeah. it ruins what we can see. Now you actually have a somewhat similar problem operating here, right? Yeah, so your problem is optical light, ours is radio light, radio frequency interference. A lot of the questions we get asked is, why are you located here? Why are you down in a valley? Yeah. Aren't you supposed to be on top of a mountain, like somewhere like the Mount Stromlo Observatory? Yep. And that would be the worst situation for us. We want to be in a nice radio quiet valley, a zone that's protected, shielded from all the line of sight radio noise coming from towns and cities, from radios, televisions, mobile phones. When this place was built in the 1960s, very few sheep had mobile phones. That's right. So it remains a nice radio quiet spot for us to do it because that's, that is the real problem with these tiny radio signals we're trying to get back from the depths of the universe. Anything like a mobile phone being on can actually overwhelm that kind of signal. So we ask people to help us to collect whispers from deep space by making sure their phones are off in airplane mode. They yep. can still take their photos, but just stop your phone from transmitting for a while. And this is also why then, as you said, you have this valley and we have mountains all around us. This actually helps protect those radio waves on the horizon from actually coming into this place, right? Yeah, so the, literally the granite hills around us shield us from all that noise coming in from the local region. There's a little bit of leakage over the hills as yeah. there's more and more towns and cities and everything else out there. And we have to do much more in processing that noise out so that we can continue to get these whispers from space. Now, is there, what about whispers from above us? Because there's airplanes that come over and things like that. So how do you prevent against that? Well, actually the noisiest thing for us aren't the planes and aren't the satellites that are up there. It's actually that thing, the sun. It puts out more radio noise than pretty much anything else combined in our, at least our little corner of the universe here. Yep. So we have to do a lot of filtering at that. And of course, the antennas will never point directly at the sun, always just a few degrees off. So just even like an optical telescope, you're not pointing really at the sun, just right around the edges. Just right around the edges, yeah, okay. absolutely. So yeah, it's all about managing those radio frequencies and making sure that we're you know, keeping the signals that we want to get. We also have to be very careful when we're transmitting, when we're up linking, yes. because okay. the signals can be very, very powerful, up to 100 kilowatts being transmitted yep. out there. So we do a lot of air traffic management in okay. the area so that we're not overwhelming a plane's yep. flight system out there or even a satellite flying over. Yeah. Now, are, the other, are there any other practicalities? Like, you know, moving a, a multiple ton dish 
bigger, about the size of a football field to within a hair, you know, that already seems complicated, but you know, are there any surprises that you have when you're actually operating this or do, managing this facility? Our maintenance teams do a great job making sure these antennas can do their job every day. And, and you're quite right, these, these are big structures. Imagine taking a 22-storey building, yeah. turning on its side and spinning it around every day. There's a lot of wear and tear in there. But one of the unusual things we have to take care of is actually wildlife. Okay. It's the birds. Because this is the biggest tree in the valley. <laughs> and birds like to often sit on a big tree and get, you know, roost at night. This is the, where they're going to be. So we actually have to sort of encourage the birds to not nest there and not roost there. Okay. Uh, they do realize very quickly that their tree does sway a that, lot from right. side to yeah, side. So enough. birds like a nice stable tree. So they tend to not stay there too long. But we do actually have a tiny little bell system on the antenna okay. that rings at dusk. And so the other birds think, oh, that's other birds there. I'll go to another tree. And there's plenty of them you can see yes, around say, us in the valley. There's no shortage of places for the wildlife up here. But that's really the only problem that we actually okay. get. And uh, we just want to make sure that they stay safe, that they're not going to affect any systems on yeah. the antenna and as long as they're sitting in a place where they're not going to interfere with a piece of equipment or hurt themselves then they're quite welcome to stay there on their big tree. Great. We have this big receiver and, and I get the radio waves come in, they come to the receiver, they come down, but where do they go after that? Well the next thing once we get the signal we've got to process it so the best way to look at that let's head to our control room. Sounds good. It really is quite big. I do always like how a bit, you can still see a bit of the sun shining through. Yeah, the, uh... that's always a nice, and people get confused by that. And it's like, it's why not filled with water and everything <laughs> else? And it's like, well, it's not solid. Look, yeah, you can yeah. see through it and they yeah. go, but if you can see through it, how does it hold the radio signals? Yeah, and yeah. Yeah. 